You guys remember that little Intel Nook thing I took a look at, the 12th gen? I was like, ah, can it play Modern Warfare 2? And you guys were like, ah, Modern Warfare 2, we're running a potato, it doesn't matter. It's a little thing, whatever. Well, Intel was like, fine, you want a bigger thing? Here's a bigger package for you. NZXC Canvas monitors feature more of what gamers want. The Canvas 1440p QHD offers 165Hz refresh rate for the perfect balance between performance and resolution, while the 1080p Full HD Canvas delivers 240Hz for a competitive edge. Both versions feature AMD FreeSync Premium, 1 millisecond response time, and OSD settings via cam, allowing for specific settings between games. To see the complete list of Canvas monitors and monitor mounts from NZXT, follow the link in the description below. So this is actually an Intel uh, Nook bare bones kit. So you're gonna have to add your own RAM, your own storage, your own graphics uh, and memory. But what it will come pre, ooh, it's like a Pelican case. I'll show you guys here in a sec. Oh, fast, just got faster. So if you guys don't know what a bare bones is, basically it provides a chassis, a motherboard, a CPU and a power supply that's like pre-configured and wired. Uh, perfect example of like another bare bones um, MSI made some bare bones back in the day. The H1 is almost kind of like a bare bones. It just has a built-in cooler for it. But this is where you finish outfitting it. What do I feel like? I just got some sort of like a crate drop in a game. So much power in there, it's bulging. Look at this. This is bulging out. Can you see the bulge on camera? <laughs> Non-climactic right there. Oh, okay. Does it only do it once? It's like a Hallmark card. It's just a really <laughs> yeah, big... I'm sure everyone watching would love to get a Hallmark card that includes a computer inside of it, you know? Okay, there's our power cable. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, it's a SATA adapter. So you can see how these are very small, short lengths of cable because again, this is a small form factor PC, believe it or not. Mounting screws and stuff for M.2s and extra chassis screws for mounting like uh, regular hard drives and such. It's not that big. <laughs> okay, so every single side of this chassis with exception of the very front is ventilation. So obviously it's gonna need it because of the amount of hardware that's in here. Now speaking of hardware, it comes with a 13900K. The rest of it you have to put in. So the one that they pre-configured here was kind of showing like a, hey, best case scenario, here's what you can fit in there. So ours has a 3080 Ti in there, 32 gigs of DDR5, 4800 megahertz Kingston Fury, a one terabyte Kingston Fury Gen 4 NVMe SSD. I wish it was a bigger one, but that's okay. It's just press sample. As I sort of tear into this, the top has a thumb and a spring-loaded captive screw. Two USB 3.0s, a USB-C slash Thunderbolt, I'm assuming because it's Intel, and then your audio cable. There we go, so here's our panelage. And those, I believe, are magnets right here on the side. Yeah, bitch! Magnets, oh! Stop <laughs> it! It's just a 13900K, but it's very similar to like a motherboard layout almost. So you can see you have this sort of a spinning down fire fan that, that pulls air in, and then it's gonna exhaust it out the top through this heat sink this way. We do have Plenty of case ventilation. These are actually Foxconn fans. I've never seen Foxconn branded fans, but that's what these are right here. And this is awesome because it's gonna pull air out of the chassis. And considering the fact that we have an axial fan uh, cooler in here for the 3080 Ti, there's gonna be a lot of heat that needs to be dissipated. The RAM is so dim. So as you can see, it's sort of an adapted, uh, kind of a, almost like a motherboard, laptop motherboard, but it has a traditional like IO deal in the back. But you can see just how small it is back there. Usual suspects, a dual NIC on here. Does it show the speeds on the NIC? Uh, 2.5G and a 10G. It's got a 10G NIC built in here. It's quite a chonker, to be honest. So this right here looks like where we can add some storage. So here, you, here's a tray that you can pop out and put a two and a half inch drive, probably even two on there if you use, oh, yeah, you can mount them side by side there and there for SATA drives. You can see here, this is where they've sort of done some cable management and stuck the wires just back behind there. Remember, this will all be empty in your unit simply because of the fact that um, it doesn't come with a graphics card. Here's our power supplier here, which appears to be, it's, oh yeah, it is an SFX. You can see right here, there's a shroud to help force airflow through the CPU heatsink. If I shine my light through there, you'll see it does actually 
flow all the way through there out the back of the case. So that's really well thought out. This guy right here lines up with the flow through exhaust on the 3080 Ti. So there is a pretty decent amount of thought put into this. So this is just a super tiny motherboard that is just adapted to fit a 1300K, which by the way, this is not a very massive cooler for a 13900K. I just wanna point that out there. Now that I've had one dead mouse battery later, uh, went through all of Windows invasive advertising installation malware OS installs uh, and finalization, it's now up and running. I've installed the Nook uh, Experience software or the Nook Studio software, whatever they call it, the NSS. What's really annoying is the startup motor for this particular fan. And by the way, this, this fan right here cools this top heat sink um, that's attached to this vapor chamber. And then this vapor chamber cooler is cooled by the rear fan on the top. So this cooler fan and this top fan are tied together. Now I will do temperature testing without touching any of this the stuff and then I will see how we can dial it in. But what I, this device is not supported. The irony. All right, so it's all installed now. Um, I mean, full fairness to Intel, it does state in the readme and stuff that this is an early version of the software, which is why it, we had to do some standalone installs of pieces of the software to make it all work and, and whatnot. Anyway, here it is. So here's your four RGB headers that you have control of. Right now, nothing's hooked up to those headers. There's no lighting installed with this by default. We do have fan control, which is awesome. We also have our little performance uh, doohickey here that will show us, like for instance, 43C on our discrete GPUs, with DGPUs, so that's just sitting here. And that's because, as you can see, there are zero RPM right now. And so is the CPU. You can see the CPU is also at zero RPM. So I prefer not to leave that at zero RPM. Let me tell you why. This particular fan, when it starts up, the one on the, on the heat sink right here, it, it makes kind of like a, like a grindy sound as the motor starts. And it's not like a, it's just the way the motor is. It's, it's not like there's anything impacting it or whatever. That's loud. That's 100 sound like. That's a lot of air though, holy crap. Whee. I can't make it go down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I wanna control the uh, fans, at least for the tough 3080, I would have to install like a MSI afterburner or something. So, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get all that software set up, I'm gonna get the panels put back on, and then we're going to do some temperature testing in Cinebench for the CPU specifically, and then we will do some like port royal looping or something to see how the GPU copes with uh, the temp. Okay, so we're gonna start with Cinebench R23, 13900K. We do know the desktop variant uh, with you know full cooler, 360 AIO, the whole deal. Scores uh, a little under 39,000. That's like a 38,600 or so is roughly where they land. So I want to see what is our current boost clocks and such, uh, because I'm curious as to how much they really had to pull this thing back. Now, if we look at the Nook performance here, we are only allowed 150 watts. I say only. Remember, it is a 253 watt part. So if we were to move to max performance, it's hard to see. It goes from 150 watt to 160 watts. So we get 10 extra watts, that's it. So I'm gonna go back to balance because that's the way it ships out of the box and we'll see how it changes with some of this performance mode stuff. Let's just start it up, let's see what happens. 88%, 84C, 88C. 89, well, wow, it's actually not bad. And the fans, 4.3 gigs all core. So it is quite a bit down. It's about, shoot, it's about a gigahertz lower than you would get with a desktop built part. But that's a 35,367. Okay, so we are leaving about 10% on the table of performance. But you know what though? Given the form factor and the size of this PCB and the size of this cooler, it's actually not, it's, Better, uh, this is better than I expected it to be. These single runs are not enough to really saturate coolers, so the next thing I'm gonna have to do, oh, there's 92, 93, 95, 96, 97, 98, 82. Oh yeah, we dropped all the way down 3.85 gigs right there. So that score's gonna be much lower. 33,785, yeah. So we definitely have a saturation which would be expected. Now, Cinebench R23 is a very difficult instruction set to run, uh, the AVX instruction set. It's, it's, it's known to pound CPUs, that's why we use it. It's above and beyond the typical use case. 
What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and let this run in a loop mode for a few minutes. I wanna keep an eye on the temperatures. The fans are still extremely low. Like I feel like if the if this, now they're ramping up. I feel like if the ramp of the fans came on a little bit more aggressive up front, we might not take as much of a performance hit. I think most people would err on rather having it be a little bit louder and bring the temps down and keep the performance up than erring on the acoustic side of things. But that's a balance that Intel has to try and figure out out of the box. Ironically, that is what the mode is called for these fans, balanced. They have to reduce the clocks to keep everything under control. So that last run was a 32,465. So as you can see, we've dropped 3,000 points since our first run. But we're now running at 75C at 3.72 gigahertz. Now that's a very slow clock speed from where we could be. It's about a gig and a half down. 31,600 or so is about where it is landing. Um, ironically, that's only a little bit above a 12900K. I'm gonna leave the performance mode where it's at and I'm gonna go into uh, the fan control. And I'm now gonna put all of the fans on cool yeah, see that score right there was a 34,844, 28 seconds. That's all we get before it drops. And we that's maxed out. And again, that's entirely limited by the power supply that's in here. So I think cool is an okay setting because we're asking a lot of the CPU and I don't think it's that loud. It's not intrusive anyway. It, it, it's better than a laptop would be. Let's now see what happens if I put it on a fixed 100%. <laughs> it's so loud. 35,200. So it's still a little bit lower than our very first run because things were nice and cool. We hadn't put it under load yet. Things are now heat soaked. The PCB is heat soaked, the CPU is heat soaked, the cooler is heat soaked. Our GPU temp has dropped 6C. I'd like to point that out. Again, because that fan's right on the back of the GPU pulling air through the heat sink, which is a really good design. We can't do anything about the timer. The timer is the problem, but what we can do now is go to max performance, which will give us 160 watts on the CPU power level one. See, the thing is it drops before it gets to the end of the test. And 4.1, 3.8. So if we could complete the entire test without it dropping, 34, 230. So yeah, we're just, we're just too heat soaked now. I just want to take a little trip to the BIOS lane, or BIOS town, see if we have access to that turbo time shield. The power supply fan in this thing is very, like, intrusive though. It's got kind of a, bearing sound. It's this fan. You hear that? It sounds like a cricket. It's this top fan. I would probably recommend putting better fans in those. There we go. That's what we want. Wait, why is it not? Oh, it teases Oh, you. what the hell is this crap? Nope, we cannot access that timer uh, to, to lift it for longer. That, and you know what? That makes sense. That's because of I'm sure the VRM design on such a small PCB, such a small cooler, um, we, we have to talk about longevity and safety for the products here. We wouldn't want it to turn into another 12 volt high power plug situation. So as much as we, those settings, we always lift and max out on desktops. We have significantly better thermal design, power delivery design, and coolers available to big chassis. That's why, you know, this is probably going to be like the most powerful small computer available today. All right, so for GPU testing, all the fans are back to balance, which is where it was out of the box. And MSI afterburner settings are all stock. So this is zero RPM mode with the GPU and its own fan logic that it ships with without touching it. Being an Axial fan, it relies entirely on the chassis to exhaust the heat. And if those fans don't ramp up until the hot air has heated up the CPU enough to tell it to turn on, then everything will get hotter than it needs to. So that's why if they had added in, you know, uh, at least in the software to be able to say use GPU temp, which it clearly is reading because it's in the Nook software right there, DGPU temperature, it really needs to give us a thermal sensor to be able to say, hey, bottom fan, let's use DGPU. All right, I I'm, I'm impressed so far. It's at 64C. For a second there, I was like, what's wrong with the clock speed? But that's, <laughs> I've been looking at, 3,000 now for so long, <laughs> 1,800 megahertz, <laughs> this seems broken. Okay, I'm gonna max out now, power limit and stuff. It's at 80% fan speed on those GPU fans and it's not bad, it's at 65C in this jazz. It makes sense, it's one big vented box. So we need to go to the Nook software now and we need to take the bottom fan 
and I'm gonna put it on fixed. There's 60%. Turning up that fan will have an effect over time. Remember, I'm pulling it down under load, which takes a lot longer, but if we had that fan on from the beginning, it wouldn't have gotten as high. Probably would be, end up sitting somewhere around 61, maybe 62, maybe even 60. But anyway, this thing is kind of nuts, to be honest. So the Nook 13 Extreme, that's the family of Nook. There's a very specific model number, and I'll put this model number down below. Uh, again, it's a bare bones. Comes with the CPU, comes with the motherboard, comes with the, the power supply, and then it comes with the cooler design. Everything else, storage, memory, so dim, DDR5 by the way, and GPU are yours to figure out. I'm not, I'm, I'm fairly confident the two Foxconn fans that are in there come with it because it's part of the cooling solution. I would highly recommend replacing those fans with better fans. Fortunately, because it's not a special connector of any sort, you can change those fans with any other four pin PWM fans that you want, which I would highly recommend. Not just because of the, um, the bearing noise, but, but just quality of fan. You can put RGB fans there if you want and they'll show up. You got those RGB headers I already showed you on the bottom of the PCB. You got four of them that you have custom control over. It's just, I didn't take that whole part apart, so I'm not sure how easy it would be to actually replace those fans but I, their, their installation guide comes with very detailed teardown instructions and build instructions to guide you through the process. I'm shocked at how well the GPU is actually performing in here, even though I sped up that fan. It only came down one degree. It's been a while since I pulled it down and I showed you. I, I sped it up to 65% on the fan speed, and it came down one degree on the GPU. That tells me that the overall cooling capa capacity of this chassis with all the ventilation is enough for the GPU which is typically not the case for small form factors. And because of the fact that it's got this kind of a top bottom compartment, all that air is flowing right through the front and then that rear exhaust fan is grabbing the air and pulling it out. If you put your hand on the back side, there's a lot of heat coming out of that, which means if you set it on the right side of your setup, that hot air is gonna blow towards you. So you need to keep that in mind. Fortunately, because it's a very, it's, it's just, there's no right or left to this system. It's like ambidextrous. You can put it on the left side of your system and blow it away from you or blow it at your sister or somebody you don't like or your, your coworker and just be like, here, you know, have some heat. But yeah, it's, it's, the GPU is not throttling itself. It's at the 1800 megahertz, which is where out of the box it'll boost up to. And that makes this one of the smallest, most powerful computers today that you can possibly buy. Now it is scalable. The Nook 13 Extreme does come with either a 13900K, a 13700K, or a 13600K, which is really the only part that's gonna be scalable in this because of the fact that it's the only SKU that is included with it that has any sort of performance to it. Power supply should be the same for all of them because of the fact that it has to be able to support up to a 3080 Ti graphics card, as you can see. 3090s, and 4090s are not gonna fit in this. One, don't use a 4090. Even though it has that plug, it is a 300 watt plug, the 4090 will not even boot if you were to somehow try and like shoehorn one in there with a Dremel or vertical mount and cut a top or something. It won't work. That tells me that that's forward compatibility potentially for mid-range graphics cards coming out later on in this release cycle that will have a lower wattage demand. 300 watts should be more than enough for like a, theoretically a 4060 or something like that. Um, but it's there. It's nice that it has both standard 8-pin PCI Express 6 plus 2s as well as the 12-volt high-power adapter with one sense pin enabled for 300 watts. So there you go, guys. I'll put the link to this down below. I don't know what the price of this is. It wasn't included in the information that I received, but I can tell you right now it's probably pretty pricey because of the fact that this is very bespoke. Everything is specific to it. But we're hoping because Intel's manufacturing this with the motherboard slash daughter board PCB adapter thing on the bottom, all hopefully ha happening in house, uh, with potentially, I guess, a Foxconn helping with a motherboard or something that, that could keep costs down. I don't know. It's a beast, I'll tell you that. And that's just because of the fact that it's got a 3080 Ti in there. Obviously, there's some drawbacks to it. It is a desktop part that does not give you desktop performance because of the fact that it's limited by the, the thermal and power delivery design of a very, very small motherboard and power supply. But that's some of the trade-offs you go, you get when you go like this. Anyway, sound off down below if this, it's hard to even call this a nook. This is a mini tower. It's not even a nook as far as I'm concerned. But does this interest you? Does it now, because it has a big discrete graphics card option available to it, does this, this is something that maybe would pique your interest or is it just still too much compromise in a form factor like this? Sound off down below guys and as always, we'll see you in the next one. And it's still at 64C. Good job, little buddy.